The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the June 10th, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got your back. You can send me an email. Now you send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tar Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We begin our day here with a mixed bag. That mix goes like this. Dow's off 71. S&P is off less than a point right now. NASDAQ's up 39. Russell's down 5. Semis are up 60. Gold's off 5 bucks. Silver's up 21 pennies. Lights recruit up a buck 22. Natural gas is up 14 cents. Printed out at 305. By the way, its target is 3.16. I think I said 3.6 out there. We'll take a look at the natural gas charts during the show out here. You've got um, the 30-year treasury printing out at uh, 116.27. That's back 22 ticks out there. Leading our charge, <clears throat> excuse me, dollar-wise to the upside, Texas Pacific Land Corporation. 25% move, 144 bucks. CrowdStrike, 32 bucks, 10%. Broadcom, 32 bucks, 2.5%. Lamb Research, 31 bucks, 3%. MicroStrategy, 26 bucks, 1 and 6 tenths percent. I guess you could say that's why we've got a rally going on in the socks out there. To the downside, it's ADP, Automatic Data Processing, up 3% or 7 bucks. Intuit, 7 bucks, 1%. Celsius Holdings, 7 bucks, 9%. Adobe, 6 bucks, 1 and 3 tenths percent. And Dick Sporting Goods, off about 2.5%. That's a $5 move to the downside. So we got things to look at. And, of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. So where are we going to start? That's a great question. So let's start. We'll just start as long as I'm on the black background charts so I don't screw things up completely. We'll start here by taking a look at Peter from Park City's favorite indicator and tool, and that's the advanced client oscillator inside the New York Stock Exchange, which is still below the zero threshold level. So this indicator is telling us that the sellers are the ones that are in control of the market. So that's what that says. Now, that's not going to get a whole lot of play out there until we see that spot volatilix trade above, close above its 50-day exponential moving average. The 50-day is currently printed at 1363. Stevie, why do you say that? I say that because you can do this exact same thing, which is go take a look at a chart, put the S&P 500 top or bottom, above or below that, put the spot volatilix. And you can just draw a simple little, you know, I use a line chart for that because we're really looking at this case here, the close. It's the most important thing out here, especially for the spot volatilics. That red line at the bottom is the 50-day. The rectangles, squares, boxes, whatever we have up top, show you in the green is telling us when the spot fix is below the 50-day, and basically price moves sideways to higher. And when the boxes are red, typically we see sideways to lower movement out there. So that New York Stock Exchange signal is not going to get much traction unless we see that spot volatilics close above that 50-day exponential moving average. And again, right now, that number is at 1363 out there. Anything else for me to show you on this set of charts? Not that I can think of. So that's what's going on there. Now, we're going to take a look at the VIX in a little bit. We had a request to take a look at that this morning. 
uh, from one of our dinners out there. I should have written down who that was. That was John C. who put that in there. So we're going to take a look at that. Take a look at that in a little bit. But first, let's go take a look at Let's continue to study. Well, let's study the uh, equity future contract. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and change over to the white background screen so we can see what's going on daily and then take a look at intraday signals and so forth. So the first charts, that'll pop up. You'll see the ES Mini. I'll simply expand it out. We're all focused on the same thing. You'll see that new profile that we talked about. If you heard the 11 to game update out there, that's attempting to form. So resistance here is at the high, 53.85.50. Price is above that green oscillator and change line. As long as price remains above that, this is the daily chart that we're looking at, it being, at the moment, 53.48. As long as price remains above that, that's a green price oscillator, as a green oscillator and change line tells us we have a rising price oscillator above zero. Those are bullish conditions. Bullish conditions should take us to the next level of resistance. Well, we got that, 53.85.50. Now, this profile will not confirm until uh, 6 six o'clock this evening but right now um, we'll use the data as we've got it whereas if price were to close below that green oscillator and change line it would suggest a further retracement would not guarantee getting back to the support of the buy zone which is down to 52.23.50 to 52.95.50 or 52.59.50 um but the most important thing, maybe I said this, and I apologize. I'm still under, definitely under the weather here. We're just hoping for no hacking during this uh, hour. Um, and uh, so, but that profile is wrapped around the prior profile. That suggests that we prepare for a consolidating market. Not a market's going to break out. Not the market's going to break down. Not that you wouldn't consider moving from 53, 54, where we're at right now, to 52, 23. They would, you know, most people would consider that a breakdown. But when this would just take price back to support, you know, hard to call that a breakdown. Uh, so that's the ES mini. Let's go take a look at the NQ, which is trading the upside out here. The NQ is trading. Uh, so this also has a new profile. Continues to shift a bit. Right now, this profile is below price. That happens to be a bullish signal out there. Now, what we can also see about the current profile, when I say it's changed, I mean it's changed. It's changed from what we were taking, what I was taking a look at at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and even 10 o'clock this morning. Now it's 11 o'clock. <clears throat> but this current profile is wrapping around the prior profile. High is greater than the prior high. Low is greater than the uh, below the lower low out there. So this is suggesting we could see a consolidating market out here. But as long as price remains above its green oscillator and change line and above profile, that's going to be hard to say that. But that's what the message of the market is with regard to profiles. Whether the market's going to pay attention to those or not, that I can't tell you. The real bummer out here is the uh, Dow. And the Dow um, is continues to find resistance at a red oscillator and change line. So the difference between red and green, a red tells us we have a falling price oscillator below zero. Those are bearish signals out there, and that suggests we might see price pull back to support. And really, in the case of support for the Dow, we'd have to go take a look at the 38,496 area out there. Now, the interesting thing, and it's only 11,14, if it was the end of the trading session out here, the Russell 2000 would be signaling a Gartley buy pattern. Here's the A to B equals CD pattern to the downside for the Russell. I'll just simply draw in the A to B line out there. And we'll just simply move this over. I believe it completed the pattern, at least the one to one. And there you go. There's your one to one. So we're a little bit more than that. So watch for a bullish reversal candle today inside the Russell. If you get that, that's generating a Gartley buy pattern. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. <clears throat> If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the uh, intraday charts for the ES Mini out here. And so let's see what they have to tell us. Now, along the top row, five hour, four hour, two hour, each of those have topping patterns. So to take a look at that and try to understand which one, which of those time frames, if any, um, is giving us the best signals. In other words, as price move lower, support held. So if we take a look at the five hour time frame chart as an example, we did have price close below its bull structured profile back at nine o'clock in the morning, back on June the 7th, back on Friday. But there was only one bar below it popped right back above that. When I take a look at the four hour time frame chart, that same set of patterns shows that support held out there. So I'm going with the four hour time frame chart as, as being of the top row, the one that's generating the best signals out here. So we take a look at it. This formed a road momentum indicator top. That was done at 5 o'clock in the evening back on June the 7th. And what price has done, if we take a look at what took place at 6 o'clock this morning, price moved down, tested, and rejected that buy zone. That's that bullish structured profile between 53.39 and 53.45. Now, when you trade above the top or the center of a bullish structured profile, ideally, or typically what happens is you head to your next area of resistance. Well, in this case here for the ES Mini, that level of resistance is at 53.64. So is that supported by the charts below? The, the, the other entry, the 60 minute, the 30 minute, the 15 and the 10. 60 minutes above profile, and I'm going to explore to see if there was a bottom. There was, if we pull it back far enough. But you're trading above profile. That's a bullish signal. 30 minute above profile, bullish signal. Uh, 15 minute, no topping signal, and above profile, bullish signal. Now, the 10 minute chart is going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count top at 1130 out there. And so that said, says we could see a move to the downside. The problem is this had a TD9 count top that uh, formed or completed at 730 this morning and was negated immediately. So I don't know that the 10 minute time frame chart is really the one for us to hang our hat on right there. But still, I respect the pattern. Just because it didn't work the last time doesn't mean it won't work this time out there. But in this case here, it's also got a new profile, the 10 minute that is. And so if it does stay cold, you've got support at 5348, 5351. 
Um, those would be the two different support levels I'd be looking at. But everything we're looking at here, other than a 10-minute time frame chart, is suggesting that ES Mini should continue to rally, 53.64 being where it's going to go ahead and set its sights. Let's take a look at the NQ. And I believe in the NQ we've got the same type of signals to the ups on the uh, top row out there. It's going to take a moment for these to go ahead and populate. And then we'll go through them. And so, again, what I'm doing here is I'm looking for something with a topping pattern as price pulled back to support, did support hold, and that becomes the level to be watching. So, whereas I was talking about the four hour time frame chart for the ES Mini, looks to me like it's going to be the five hour. Well, it's going to be the five hour chart that's going to be the one that would give us the best of signals. Now, I say that. And we can t take a look at this. And I'll expand out the five-hour chart. It has a TD9 count top. And that's what's in place right here. Again, much like the ES Mini back at 9 o'clock in the morning on Friday, price did poke its head below that support fixture at 18,896. Got right back above it, ran right up into resistance at the top of the profile, 19,124. So there's your sideways consolidation. Now, what price is doing right now, we know that support is held this morning. Uh, it was tested at 9 o'clock, boom, right above it. And right now, in a five-hour time frame, price is trading into what should be resistance on this uh, rally out here. And that's at 19,071. If price were to close above 19071, that would suggest we get a run up to the 19124 level out there. So watch that area from an intraday perspective. So we go from that and we say, okay, we're up at resistance on a five-hour time frame chart or potential resistance. Do we have any kind of topping patterns on those shorter-term time frame charts? And it turns out the answer to that is absolutely not. We don't. We're trading about profile resistance on the 60-minute time frame, the 30-minute time frame, the 15-minute time frame, the 10-minute time frame, where the ES Mini showed a TD9 count top, the uh, NQ does not. So you've got, you know, this is suggesting more likely than not. I mean, along that top row, you can see that price is right at that OUL uh, resistance zone. But uh, without any kind of topping signals on the shorter term time frame charts, I'm going to go with it's going to ignore that and continue to rally out there. So that's going on with the NQ. We talked about the Russell 2000, or I spoke about it, as a potential uh, Gartley buy pattern set up out there. But we won't know till day's end. And the candle that's in place right now, I don't even know if it's still a hammer candle, you know, is not necessarily the candle that's going to be in place come the end of the trading session out there. So we took a look at that A to B equals CD pattern of downside. Now what we're looking for is on those short-term time frame charts, is this been signaling a bottom as well? So if you look at uh, just we'll, – we'll give it another minute here, less than a minute, to go ahead and populate and give us all the patterns out there. Um, <clears throat> so we look along the bottom row, left to right, 60-minute time frame chart, roads meant to indicator bottom. Price is trading above profile resistance, should target 2037. 30-minute chart. Wow. Uh, this is bullish because price is trading above its TD knockout breakdown level, 2024.40. It doesn't even matter whether it's got a bottom pattern or not. It's taking out a key level of resistance. So that 2037 level looks like a likely target. Same on the 15-minute time frame. It's trading above resistance. Same on the 10-minute chart. If we take a look at the 120-minute chart, price is trading into a sell zone. So along the top line, it's the red oscillator and change on the 5-4. Uh, our time frame chart out there. Those are at about 2029, and we're trading into a sell zone on the two hour time frame chart. We'll expand out this chart here, and that's trading into the uh, profile sell zone between the levels of 2055 and 2064. Boy, if you close above 20, I'm sorry, 2064, what the heck was I looking at? My goodness. So it's trading between the sell zone of 2027 and 2031. So a close above 2031 would definitely suggest we had higher. But uh, what the pattern you're really looking for is on the daily time frame, some type of bullish reversal candle. So that's what's going on inside of the Russell 2000. We do have a couple of requests that have come in. So let me uh, start on those. Don't want to fall behind. Would love many more requests. So you can give us a call at 877-927-6648. Send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Or obviously inside the Tiger's Den private or, or public ping. So the first request is from G-Man <clears throat> to take a look at Apple. And so Apple right now is trading into potential resistance. That's the top of its profile, 196.12. As roads meant to indicator signal has been triggered, but it has not generated a bearish reversal candle. So there is no top in place. Apple has negated its TD, It's a wave number seven top. That wave number seven top took place on June the 5th out there. We have ticked above it. Uh, today, at least, maybe we did on Friday, but certainly we have today. And so it's lost that signals any kind of a top. Now, today is likely going to become bar number eight of a TD9 count. 
discount. Why do you say likely, Steve? Because I don't know what Apple's going to do the rest of the day. What price needs to do today to form bar number eight is close above 194.35, G-Man. What it needs to do to complete a TD9 count pattern tomorrow is close above uh, 195.87. So I don't know whether that pattern is going to confirm or not. The other pattern that is present is a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. If we were at the end of the session right now, we'd have a dark cloud cover candle below the green oscillator and change line. That would form a Rhodes momentum indicator top and suggest we head back to support, which for Apple is between 189.88 and 192.22. That's what I see when I take a look at the daily time frame. If we look at the weekly time frame for Apple, no top at all. Prices trade into a prior swing point from back in December. Uh, December 15th, to be specific, 379 million shares traded hands that week. We are in summer trading, 245 million shares last week. Nonetheless, we've closed inside that swing point. Apple may be targeting that swing point high at the 199.62 area. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, 198.23 is monthly resistance for Apple. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LarryJune24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, still a uh, mixed bag market. You got the Dow up 46, Russell's down uh, three, S&P's up five, Nasdaq's up uh, 60. We're taking at Google out here. Again, this is for uh, G-Man inside the Tiger's Den. So what Google did on Friday was it confirmed a Rhodesman indicator top. So we had that signal that formed out here. Well, it actually formed on May 17th, uh, went ahead and advanced that signal on May 20th. And, and it did form a uh, Roachman indicator top signal back here on May 30th. That pattern was negated on uh, Thursday, Friday of last week. And uh, But we've got a new bearish engulfing candle that formed right at that green oscillator and changed on on Friday. So what Google has is a topping pattern. What it doesn't have is price closing below any levels of support. So to the downside, what Google should target, G-Man, is the 17176 level. Now, I don't know whether that would hold if it does get down there uh, or will it be 170.04, 167.47 out there. And I don't know the answer to that question. But you do have on a daily basis, you do have a top with basically what is amounted to a sideways move. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, we simply just have a consolidation with inside its profile. We have a TD9 count top that is in place out there. So support here. <coughs> Support here is a 173.49 to 171.80. If price were to close below 171.80, then that would suggest move to the 163 level. That's the weekly chart. Monthly chart is simply all out bullish. No topping pattern, no confirmation of anything. Suggests that it wants to head higher. So these topping patterns on the daily and weekly time frame, G-Man, maybe nothing more than just pulling back and testing support before it takes off again topside. So that's what I see at the moment. I hope that that evaluation uh, helped you out. Uh, we had a request from John in the Tiger's Den. Wanted to take a look at the VIX this morning. His question was, you know, any interpretation from the fact that it's uh, trading higher, basically. So let's go take a look at its charts out here. Um, and this is a chart. So we've got the ES Mini, uh, which basically the S&P 500, what the VIX is relating to. So that's at the bottom pattern. Those people, some people trade UVXY. And then I've got the two future contracts. It is really the June contract. That's the one that uh, we would be paying attention to. But so when I take a look at the spot volatility, the most important thing for me, John, is uh, are we trading above or below the 50-day expense moving average? And we're trading below that. And that's at one at 13.67 at the moment. Price did gap to the upside. So, uh, but we also had the ES Mini that was trading lower uh, this morning as well. Uh, not, not significantly, um, but that's also because the S&P 500 was in the ES Mini was trading at all-time highs in terms of euros, yen, and pounds earlier this morning out there um, versus what was going on inside of U.S. dollars. So for me, with regard to that interpretation, you need, if we start to build a series of higher lows out there, then maybe that'll have more meaning to us. Now, if we take what's going on in those VIX future contracts out here, such as the June contract, what we can see is, pull this back just a tad, and what we can see here is uh, this has a road momentum indicator signal with no, and uh, this is the daily time frame that we're taking a look at, with no bullish reversal candle. So if we had that, then that might be giving us more of a signal of what the VIX's intention is. Right now, the intention is that it wants to trade lower, which is what we're seeing when we take a look at the actual cash index out here. So, um, and I don't see anything in the July contract, not that that comes into play as we speak uh, just yet out there. So I don't, uh, the meaning for me is more that um, nothing of significance here to suggest that the market is going to head lower out there. Instead, I'd be watching like we took a look at that, was it the four-hour time frame chart for the ES Mini? To me, I think that has uh, as much or more relevance than anything at the uh, moment out there. So I hope that that helps you out just a, a tad out there. And uh, thanks, as always, for your question. Uh, Nicholas wrote in, and he'd like to take a look at Netflix. He was suggesting that the Netflix, which uh, my uh, reports show, has a uh, confirmed Rhodesman indicator top. And the question is, is now a good time to short it? So let's go take a look at those charts here for Netflix, see what they're communicating to us. So here, so one of the things, Nicholas, let me explain to you, when you see the um, daily uh, uh, or in the evening reports that list a, 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 a quite a few, you know, all the top 10 instruments inside the S&P, the Dow, the NASDAQ, the semis out there, um, what, what, what I was unable to program uh, electronically were the bullish and bearish reversal candles. 
And uh, so what I've had to use, because those are what I really use to trigger a confirmation of a pattern. So from a reporting standpoint out there, what I've had to use is I've had to use the oscillator and change line. Prices below that, then it's going to give us that confirmation as long as we have a road spent indicator signal present. So we can see on Friday, that's what uh, price closed below that oscillator and change line and signal that. Now, what we can also see out here is so, do, so the question is, do I have a confirmed top? And the answer is no. Um, even though that's what the system showed. But we also have here that we can see is we have a consolidation with inside its daily profile. And that's running between 635.49 and 653.47. Now, um, when price was last down below profile, that was on June the 4th out there. That was, that's when it made its most recent low. Volume there was about 3 million shares. Friday, price was pulling back with 1.8 million shares. Today, so far, we are at 564. That's going to be less than 1.8 million shares or thereabouts. So it's not like volume is suggesting that you take a short. But if you would really like to take a short in Netflix, knowing that we haven't busted through key support levels, my suggestion would be to look for the 653.47 area. That would be the better spot, the top of a bear structured profile for you to try to take that position. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, what does the weekly time frame chart show us? It shows us no topping pattern whatsoever. So that just suggests that, uh, and, and neither does the monthly time frame chart. Both of those charts are bullish. The so monthly is even more bullish than the weekly chart is. So we just simply may have a bit of a sideways consolidation going on versus a signal of an all out short inside of uh, Netflix out there. So that's what I see. Great question. I'm glad that I could explain that to you, and hopefully that makes a bunch of sense. Let's go take our next request out here, and that is, uh, shoot, somebody inside the Tiger's Den. I didn't write it down, but the question was to take a look at HALO. H-A-L-O is the uh, ticker symbol. That was for Dude inside the Tiger's Den. And he was hoping for a gap fill in order to take a long position out here. And he's looking at 45.78. I assume that's the high out here, 45.78, the high of June the 5th out there. So the question is, first, will price get down there? Do we have any signals uh, that would suggest that Halo would get down to that level out there? And the answer is we don't. Now, when we take a look at the future market, futures market, and I show you those new profiles, and I tell you they're attempting to form, which they are, by the way, when I get to cash index charts, uh, not cash, when I get to cash, when I get to stock charts, when the profiles form, they're real. There's no interpretation needed. So in the case of Halo, they have formed below price. That is a bullish message. It doesn't mean, dude, that the price can't um, uh, pull, you know, can't retrace or pull back to support, which, by the way, support here right now would be 46.77 out there. But we've got no topping pattern. So let's do this. Steve is going to take a bunch of uh, slips of water out here, wet that throat down. And we'll come back. We'll finish taking a look at Halo. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at the uh, continuing to take a look at the stock chart here for Halo for Do It Inside the Tiger's Den. He'd like to buy this as a uh, price can pull back to where it had gapped out, uh, gapped up back on June the uh, 6th out there. And right now, and so the question is, do I see any patterns that suggest that price will get it back down there? And the answer to that question is no, I don't. So we talked about the profile forming below price. We know that price is trading above that. We know price trading above screen asset and change line. So today, today would be bar number seven of a TD9 count. The only pattern that I see out here at the moment, let me just open this up a little bit further. So there's an A to B equals CD pattern, most certainly. Let's draw that in out here. Uh, again, it's the daily chart we're looking at. I'm going to draw in the approximate number. So I'm just going to move this over to the uh, C point out there. So we got this. So the C point, you can see we've established. So this has uh, um, uh, is, is trading well above the one-to-one -one level. But what I also want you to notice, we maintain that exact same angle of A to B on C to D. See how price is on the left-hand side of that C to D? Tell us about a stronger move than the A to B line. That suggests we do more than a one-to-one. -one. So if Halo, what you'd be looking for, the one topping pattern that you'd be looking for, would be a bearish reversal candle that would confirm a sell the D point. If that were to unfold, then price should pull back and test support. Support levels, there's various support levels. The first would be the green asset and change line. Let's assume that was a pattern right now. Then I would say price would pull back towards 47.73. If price were to get below that, it would pull back to the top of that profile, 47.67 out there. So that would be the signal. The other pattern that could unfold would be a TD9 count pattern, but that means price is going to have to spike above the high from June 6 out there at 53 bucks. And then that happens, then we'll you know have to come back and take a look at what the new patterns might be, if anything, out there. On a weekly time frame, things are just simply bullish out here, just period. Looks to me like it wants to get back to its all-time high. Now, price has not gotten back to its swing point. That's a swing point from December of 2022. But those are the signals. So I'd understand wanting to buy some type of retracement to get in on this, a momentum move out there. If we look at the intraday charts out here, what we'll notice – whoops, that's not it. Sorry. I'll get to those in a moment. And the intraday chart that I've got is a 65-minute chart. Somebody might ask, why 65-minute? Because you have um, equal bars uh, using a 65-minute chart on a 390-minute day, which is what we basically are dealing with out here. So on the 65-minute time frame chart, this generated both a wave number 7, that's letter G, and a TD9 count top. Now, that 65-minute time frame chart, that went ahead and confirmed basically 14.55 on June the 6th out there. Now, when we get a top, remember, all that that tells us is that price should get back to support. If it breaks support, then we have a whole different scenario. On a 65-minute time frame, this was your buy point. Your buy point out here was price getting back to support. 
at 1035 this morning as price got back and tested that area out there. So now the question is, what's price going to do? I think it should go target at least 5180. If it gets about 5180, 53 bucks would be the, the normal time frame out there. So maybe what you do is you just be patient out here uh, or you go down into an intraday chart uh, such as a 65, maybe it's a 30 or something like that. Try to make them equally timed bars out there and look for some type of pattern so that you could ride this up towards that $58 level out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to Halo. Um, I, mean, I mentioned that I would take a look at natural gas. So let's go do that. Let's flip back to those charts out there. One, I misstated where the price target was, which is a swing point high. So let's just clarify that, take a look at that. Out there, we're looking at the daily time frame chart, and that level is 3.161. So that's the actual high from the trading session of May the 23rd. You can see we're inside that swing point, and we're trading above resistance, which is the profile level. No reason for that for that to not get taken out. Now, the question is, is this going to set up a new A to B equals CD pattern of the upside? I don't know the answer to that question, but let's take a look at that, you know, probably tomorrow. Uh, but price should go at least target that high at 3.161. Looks like we definitely have a nice solid bottom inside of natural gas. At least that's what the daily chart says. How about the weekly chart? Well, you know what? Weekly chart is trading about profile resistance. The profile resistance here was at the 261 level. Um, so there's no reason for this not to continue to move higher. It does have resistance at that bear shooting star high, which is going to be that 3.161 area. So there is a bit of resistance, both a swing point and then a more meaningful swing point on the weekly time frame. Monthly chart, we're trading about the offset and change line. We're trading about profile. So, yeah, this does look real. Now, on an intraday basis, you got a Rosemont indicator top on the 30-minute time frame chart. All that's led to is a consolidation with inside its bullish structured profile, and the center of that profile is acted as support. So it's neutral. I would call that more of a neutral signal. No topping pattern on the 60-minute nor the 120. The 240 has a TD9 count top, uh, and that is going to go ahead and come firm at two o'clock this afternoon will complete at the end of the day so you know if you are long natural gas i'd watch a four-hour time frame chart looking for some signals and some of the intraday charts as well like the 30 because that still has that roadmap indicator topping pattern in place out there so i hope that clarifies things and helps everybody out with regard to natural gas what its intentions are and what to continue to look for um this wasn't a request but i'm out of requests out there oh i do see one xle we'll come back to that uh, I'll go ahead and get that into the system. But Dan was asking, or was talk, talking about inside the Tiger's Den, if you don't mind, Dan, A-G-E-N. I'm just looking for things to do so I don't have to do much thinking, so to speak. I mean, I think when I take a look at the charts here, but you sort of get the picture. So we take a look at this ticker symbol, A-G-E-N. This is formed on a daily basis, a TD9 count top. Again, you form a top. What is price supposed to do? It's supposed to pull back and test support. Well, it did that. It did that on Friday, support being that green oscillator and change line. So the signal here, even though it's got a top, is neutral. Price is trading with inside a new pro platform a couple of days ago. The buy zone out there would be between 1443 and 1502. Resistance is going to be 1911. Price should go target that resistance level. Absolutely, 1911. There's no topping pattern on the weekly time frame. The only issue that this really has, but it still should get to 1911, is at 1952. And 1952 is the top of that monthly profile. If price can start beginning, start can start trading above a 1952, continue to close above 1952, you're looking at an eventual move up to the $32 level. And that's from the monthly time frame chart. That's its TD9 count breakdown resistance area out there. So I hope that that helps you out. Um, it just adds a, some additional commentary out there. So that's what Stevie has done. Let's go take a look at a request that actually has come in. And that is from, um, that is from oh, Danny wants TGB. We'll do that in a moment. So let's do XLE. Since I don't have that up, let's just go ahead and put this in here. This is for S&P inside the Tiger's Den. Does not have a position inside of the XLE. And so I think the question is, should he have one? So the XLE formed a buy the D point pattern back on June 4th when it formed that bullish hammer candle. So if we open up the chart, we can see the A to B equals several A to B equals CD down patterns out here. So that is a buy the D point pattern. Now what price is doing is trading with inside his profile, trying to get above that red oscillator and change line, that being 9105. A close day above 9105, S&P should take price up to 9190. So you've got the bottom. Obviously, what you like to do is try to find some type of buy, some type of retracement or pullback. On a monthly, a weekly time frame chart, TD9 count top. Again, all you're supposed to do is get back to support. It crushed the first level of support, which was the green oscillator and change line, but found support at the second level. 
second level being the bottom of its profile. Is that a bottom pattern? Well, sometimes just simply pulling back to support is a bottom. So I'm going to go with yes, especially based upon the daily pattern that we have out there. Monthly time frame as a road's momentum indicator top with price trading sideways. So um, when I come back from this break here, I'll take a look at some intraday charts, 30 minute. I'll also get the chart for TGB up for Dan from New York, and we'll probably finish out the show that way. See Rose with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. So I did spend some time during that break <clears throat> taking like an intraday charts out here, S&P, for the XLE. And there was really nothing that popped up that was going to assist us. So here's the current trading plan. Let's see if today takes out that oscillator and change line. If it does, price gets up to 91.90. So that would be resistance. Then at that point in time, let's see if that resistance holds. And then price starts pulling back. And if it does, then, you know, we'll, we'll at least look for some intraday patterns <coughs> um, for you to uh, take a long position in it. But I don't see that anything on the intraday charts out there. And knowing that that monthly longer term still has that road's momentum indicator top, um, you know, maybe that's really what the outcome is. You've got a nice bottom, price going to rally up to resistance and then pull back and do something else out there. Uh, but that weekly chart is saying, well, I don't know about that. So that's the best call that I've got for you at the moment. I hope that that helps you out. And as always, thanks so much for your request out there. The uh, next request is from uh, inside the Tiger's Den from uh, Dan from New York to Seiko Mines. Dan, if uh, today, if this was the, uh, if I was doing, if this was a four o'clock show, 
and it was basically 455 right now, I would tell you that the Seiko Mines just generated a uh, Gartley buy pattern, a buy the D point pattern. Why? Because we have a nice bullish engulfing candle. Uh, after an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. Now, this was like a 1 to 1.618. I mean, that's just visually how I'm taking a look. Here's your A to B line out there. If I just move this over, you know, to the C point, you can see we're well beyond that. So I'm just eyeballing it. It was probably a 1 to 1.618, maybe a 1 to 2. Uh, a to B equals CD pattern to the downside. That really doesn't matter. This today right now is the first bullish reversal candle since that pattern attained at least that 1 to 1 level. Now, there is a profile that is formed about three days ago. And that's got support at 242. So we're trading at 243 right now. Ideally, you'd love price to close above 242. And then you'd have a battle at 249 and 255. But on a daily time frame, it looks to me like you're going to get a Gertley buy pattern today inside of TGB. And on the uh, weekly chart out there, it consolidates with inside its weekly profile. So, folks, have a marvelous Monday. And I'll look forward, I hope, to seeing you at 11 a.m. sharp on Terrific Tuesday. Take care. Be safe out there.